Hello there, geographers, and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Last time we talked about Unit 4, Topic 1. We were looking at different political organizations. Today we're going to continue that conversation as we further our understanding of these organizations, but we're also going to expand it as we get further into Unit 4, Topic 2, different political processes. In our last video, we talked about a bunch of different political organizations, and a couple of them are coming back in 4.2. So we're going to start with a pop quiz. And that's time. Hopefully you were able to figure out the answers to those questions. If you're struggling at all, again, make sure you go watch my 4.1 video. It'll go over all those concepts and more. And to check your answers to those questions, make sure you go down to the comment section of this video. I'll have my comment pinned on the top that has the answers. This way it saves us a little bit of time for the video so you can be more efficient with your studying. Now in order for us to have a full understanding of the political processes today, we have to be able to go back in time. And when we do this, we'll see that countries like to expand throughout the course of history, colonialism and imperialism was used. This allowed countries not only to gain more economic power, but political power as well. Colonialism is the practice of one country establishing settlements in another geographic area that does not belong to them. These are often known as colonies. And when they do this, they end up imposing their own political, economic, and cultural values upon the society. While imperialism, on the other hand, is more of the idea of states expanding through military force to gain economic and political power over other states and nations. Both colonialism and imperialism reshaped the world today. In Unit 3, we talked a lot about diffusion in the cultural landscape. Colonialism and imperialism led to more diffusion to occur. We saw that lingua francas were created as language was diffused around the world. Universalizing religions continued to spread and they converted more adherents, which allowed for their faiths to grow. We saw that clothes and food all spread along with these new cultures that were being introduced introduced to new locations around the world. And we also continue to see new governments, political systems, and economic systems form as they came into contact with other cultures. All of this was because of colonialism and imperialism. Some of the changes were positive ones and some were negative, as we saw that more of modern pop culture continued to dominate and continued to grow, as folk culture continued to become replaced. We also saw the formation of new political boundaries as shapes of states started to emerge. And even today, a lot of the states that we know on our world map came from this era. And some conflicts also started to arise as some of the colonial powers ignored some of the local cultures and created states based on their own benefits. Unfortunately, that wasn't the only negative impact from colonialism and imperialism. The world also saw the forced migration of enslaved people, a power struggle start to develop between developing countries and the developed countries. As countries started to become independent, they saw that they were still reliant on their former rulers and other more developed countries in the world. This led to a trade imbalance balance between different countries and commodity dependence. All of this furthered the divide between the developing and the developed world. For example, we could go back to the Scramble for Africa or the Berlin Conference of 1884 to 1885, where we saw European powers colonize the continent of Africa, seeking to gain more resources and also expand their political and economic power. European powers set up Africa in a way that would benefit their own interests. States were created based off longitude and latitude. They were created in a way that made it easy for European powers to get resources out of Africa and to Europe. Colonies and soon-to-be new form states lack substantial infrastructure, education. Their facilities were set up in ways that made them dependent on their European power. If we fast forward today, we can see that the impact of this colonial era is still at play. Many of the conflicts that are happening in Africa are between nations and ethnic groups that reside within one state. They're not between different states. For example, when looking at the Murdoch ethnic map, we can see the different ethnic groups and cultures that reside within each state. And when we compare this data with where the conflicts are occurring within Africa, we can gain a new level of insight. Notice how when looking at these two maps, the conflicts happening in Africa are not between two different states. Rather, it is between the different ethnic groups that reside within the state. When comparing the two maps, we can see how conflicts are centered around geographic areas with multiple 
multiple nations and ethnic groups residing within them. Throughout history, we can see plenty of different examples of people who fought for their independence, whether it be by force or through peaceful protest. India and the United States are just two of the great examples that we could look at. Today, the United Nations identifies 17 places in the world that it categorizes as non-self-governing territories. However, this list does not include uninhabited areas or places that have a high degree of autonomy. For example, the United States and Puerto Rico. Now, so far throughout this video, we've been talking about history and ethnic groups, and we've been going into also different political states. But we haven't addressed shifts in power. Throughout the course of time, we can see plenty of examples when actually a central government loses some of its power. This shift in power is known as devolution. This is the shift of power from a central government down to regional governments within one state. Notice that we're just focusing on the shift of power here. The state itself is not breaking up. A great example of this could be the United Kingdom. We could look at Scotland, Northern Ireland, and Wales. They all have a high degree of autonomy and control over their own lands, but they're also part of the United Kingdom. Over time, we saw that the central government gave up some of their power for these regional areas to allow them to have some more autonomy. This is devolution. The power is transferring from the central government down. We can actually see this is a debate that is occurring today, with Scotland asking for more autonomy due to Brexit and the changing political environment that's happening in Northern Europe. Now, sometimes when students are studying, they confuse devolution for balkanization. This sometimes could happen because of devolution, but it's not always the case. Balkanization is when a state breaks up due to ethnic conflicts within the state. The term comes from the breaking up of Yugoslavia that broke up due to the transfer of power and conflict between different ethnic groups and nations that resided within it. Now, I do want to highlight that the history of Yugoslavia is complex, and I don't have time to go into all the different reasons why the state broke up or to go into all the different nations that reside within it, but I would encourage you to do that on your own time. All right, geographers, you know the drill by now. The time has come to do our practice quiz. Review the concepts that we've talked about in this video. You can see the questions on the screen right now. Once you're done with them, go check your answers out in the comment section of this video. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, consider subscribing. It's a great way to support the channel and allows me to make more videos in the future. And if you are struggling in your AP Human Geography class and need that little extra help, don't forget to check out my AP Human Geography Ultimate Review Packet. You can find a link to it in the description of this video. It's a great resource that has practice practice stuff on all the units in this course, and it'll make sure that you can get an A in the class and a five on that national exam. All right, geographers, I'm Mr. Sin. That's all the time we have for today. And until next time, I'll see you online.